The Florida Department of Transportation Design Manual, Chapter 233, Intelligent Transportation Systems, received a major update during 2018. The update was approved by the Federal Highway Administration in October 2018. All content in Section 233 was reviewed and updated to include best practices and to reflect current technologies and standards. Original sections were revised with additional details, and out-of-date information was removed. Five new sections, Power Design, ITS Poles and Structures, ITS Enclosures, Additional ITS Devices, and Maintenance of ITS Devices and Communication were added. This new content addresses elements of ITS infrastructure not previously included in the design manual. In Section 233.1, the scope of ITS design is expanded to cover ITS elements on arterials and express lanes. The 16 FDOT and national standards now referenced in 233.1 include several additions. Many of the new references are common standards directly related to traffic control, such as the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, or MUTCD. Some are indirectly related, such as the Highway Beautification Policy. The section also references the new FDOT Express Lanes Manual. In addition, 233.1 provides new guidance on the use of devices on the approved product list, the use of innovative products, and the development of technical special provisions and modified special provisions. Section 233.2, ITS Design Criteria, covers various items to consider when designing ITS elements and systems. Considerations such as equipment life expectancy, value engineering, and environmental impacts, among others, should all be taken into account. Section 233.2.1 notes that all ITS projects must contain a systems engineering analysis in compliance with FDOT's guidelines for implementation of Part 940 in Florida. A systems engineering analysis ensures compliance with Code of Federal Regulations, Chapter 23, Part 940, Section 940.11. ITS infrastructure to support connected vehicle technologies is also a growing aspect of ITS design. Accommodations for future expansion, including CV equipment and advances in other related ITS technologies, should be incorporated into the design. Providing sufficient cabinets, poles, and communications infrastructure is critical to allowing for expandability. In recognition of Section 233's applicability to arterials and express lanes, ITS design criteria were expanded to address utility and landscaping impacts. The section also provides general guidance on consideration of maintenance during design. Proper placement of devices and infrastructure will allow for proper maintenance with minimal impact to the public. Optimal ITS design will improve maintenance access, and reduce maintenance costs. Design of power systems for ITS field elements is now also addressed in Design Manual Section 233. ITS equipment typically operates on 120 volts alternating current from the commercial utility service provider. At some locations, the utility provider supplies a higher voltage, up to 600 volts. These systems require transformers to provide correct voltage and amperage for each ITS device or location. Some systems also operate using low voltage direct current power sources, facilitating battery and solar power options. Uninterruptible power supply systems should be incorporated as much as possible. Intelligent transportation systems are critical in emergency situations for both the Florida Department of Transportation and citizens. Generator connectors and transfer switches should also be included whenever possible. Application for electric service is covered in Section 233.3.3. Proposed service points require approval by the commercial utility provider. This can be time consuming, so it is best to seek approval in early design phases. Points to consider include availability of power, standard service type for the load to be provided, point of delivery, approval of service points, coordination meetings with utility service providers, which are recommended, 
and obtaining written agreements if possible. Power design, load, and voltage drop requirements go hand in hand. Take into account the load of the proposed equipment and any future expansion requirements when designing the electrical system. For equipment sites located far distances from the power service point, it may be advantageous to request a higher service voltage and utilize a step-down transformer at the field cabinet. Section 233.3.7 describes the installation requirements of power cables, and Section 233.3.8 covers grounding and lightning protection. The designer should reference the standard plan for devices or structures being installed for specific grounding requirements. In addition, follow National Fire Protection Association standards for the installation of lightning protection systems. Also consider UL 1449 and the National Electrical Code. Section 233.3.9.1 covers generator design requirements. If required, the backup generator must be sized based on the design load of the system. This should include peak loads and allow for planned future expansion of the system. Automatic transfer switches should be provided for all permanent generator installations. The eight subsections in 233.3.10 address DC power considerations including batteries and wiring. There are several different types of battery backup systems available. Some provide power backup for a single ITS cabinet, while others provide backup for prefabricated equipment shelters or server rooms at the Transportation Management Center. Follow the guidelines supplied no matter which type of DC power is included in the design. ITS infrastructure elements covered in Section 233.4 include conduits, pull boxes, junction boxes, splice vaults, fiber optic cable and related hardware, and fiber optic cable designating systems. Section 233.4 provides guidance on placement of pull boxes at special locations, such as railroad crossings, and references standard plans such as Index 634 and Index 635 for additional details. Most ITS networks operate on a fiber optic communication backbone. The remaining communications are over cell modems or other wireless communications. Section 233.5 lists design requirements for single mode fiber optic cables, trunk lines, drop cables, and color codes. The section also requires that the design of fiber splices, terminations, and connection hardware is based on specific project needs with the following information provided in the design. General network topology, facility diagrams illustrating conduit routes, network diagrams including communication hub details, external network connections and demarcation points, and fiber optic block diagrams that show switches, field devices, and physical network connectivity. The section also requires fiber optics and network designs to show splice points and splice diagrams, origin and destination points, minimum link loss budget, reserve loss budget, splice enclosure details, location of existing fiber optic cables and splice details if needed, and termination of fiber optic cables using a fiber patch panel or pre-terminated connectors. Section 233.6 covers what to consider when designing ITS poles and structures. Consider soil boring information to be used in the design of foundations. Also consider incorporation of existing ITS infrastructure as well as road geometry, sign spacing, lightning protection, and potential underground conflicts. Aesthetics and line of sight issues are also important. In addition to covering these considerations, the section provides guidance on how to incorporate camera lowering devices. ITS enclosures include ITS field cabinets, small equipment cabinets, and equipment shelters. Each of these cabinet types require an analysis for design, usage, and placement. Cabinets should be selected for the type of equipment that they will house. Cabinets will be mounted on concrete pads, on existing or new structures, or on ITS poles. Mounting details are shown in the standard plans. Conduit placement for ITS cabinets is also important. Current and future uses should be designed into the conduit placement.
Small equipment enclosures are structure or pole mounted cabinets that are smaller than the typical ITS cabinet. These are often used in addition to ITS cabinets to house and protect various system components. Equipment shelters are used to house fiber termination panels, routers, and other communications equipment. Also known as hub buildings, these shelters include air conditioning and security systems. Backup power is also required. The section provides additional detail and guidance for the general design of equipment shelters. Section 233.8 covers design requirements for communication and networking. The FDOT ITS network includes a variety of equipment that uses Internet protocol and Ethernet communications. This network connects field devices to regional traffic management centers and connects traffic management centers to one another. 233.8 also provides guidance on the design of data circuits. Some ITS devices require a device server to communicate with a managed field Ethernet switch or MFES on a managed ITS network. Device servers are often needed for vehicle detection systems, roadway weather information systems, and other devices that require low-speed serial data connections. Wireless communication systems are also needed on the ITS network. Sometimes wireless communication is the best option. 233.8.4 describes criteria for design of wireless communication systems. It also provides guidance on complying with Federal Communication Commission rules. Wireless systems are not recommended for express lanes in order to maximize data security and minimize the risk of communications interference. Section 233.9 covers the design requirements for each of the vehicle detection systems currently in use by the Department. Standard Specification 660-2 covers the installation and material requirements for each type of detection system. Detection technologies include microwave, video, inductive loops, wireless magnetometers, and automatic vehicle identification. Design guidance for each type of detector covers detector spacing for urban and rural locations, detector spacing for express lanes, lane coverage, and compatibility with several context-sensitive design classifications. Section 233.9.5 specifically covers automatic vehicle identification systems. Follow district objectives and requirements to determine AVI site locations and spacing. Section 233.10 covers closed circuit television systems. The section includes new guidance on placement of cameras for verification of express lane dynamic message sign and ramp meter operations. Another new consideration for selection of camera locations is avoiding landscaping. Other design criteria include camera pole placement, camera field of view, camera spacing, general use for verification of dynamic message sign operation, and maintenance access. Modification of existing landscaping may be required for proper camera placement. Review height requirements as well as environmental factors. Explore co-location with other ITS devices, especially vehicle detection systems. Equipment cabinets may be able to accommodate several device types. Select the proper cabinet type by location. Refer to the standard plans index 641-020 and 649-020 for camera pole and foundation details. Section 233.11 covers motorist information systems. Motorist information systems include dynamic message signs, other electronic signs, highway advisory radios, and citizens band radios. Design considerations for dynamic message signs include sign size, sign type, and required support structure. New to this section are requirements specifically for express lane DMS, including character heights, characters per line, and sign resolution, also called pixel pitch. Section 233.12 covers additional ITS devices. These devices may not be part of every project, but are in use in certain locations around Florida. Section 233.12.2 covers ramp metering signals. 
designers must follow the requirements of the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices when designing ramp meters. Some other items to consider include the acceleration distance required from the ramp meter stop bar to allow safe entry into traffic. Also consider the on-ramp space available for vehicle storage to minimize possible cross-street interference, as well as detector placement and signage. Section 233.12.3 covers connected vehicle infrastructure. The design manual lists various USDOT requirements and tools available to design a CV system, including guidance on dedicated short-range communication, along with FCC licensing requirements. Ongoing and new construction projects often occur in areas with existing ITS equipment. With this in mind, Section 233.13 has been added to the manual to cover considerations for maintenance of ITS devices and communications during construction projects. Items to be incorporated into construction projects within the limits of existing ITS infrastructure include ensuring that new communication networks are available before removing existing networks, using temporary fiber that is placed outside the construction limits, use of temporary wireless communications, and general maintenance of existing ITS devices. The maintenance of ITS devices and communications plan must be approved by the engineer. This completes our briefing on changes made to Chapter 233 of the Florida Department of Transportation Design Manual.